Welcome to Dynamic Homeschool. In this video, I want to show how I use layers of learning, how I create um, my lesson plan for an entire unit. There is a love-hate relationship with this, more love. I love that it's not an open and go curriculum, um, but you know, when I have lazy days, I really wish that it would just tell me what to do and I didn't have to do all the planning. But, um, and I also love that depending on what's happening in the world, this curriculum can be, because you are creating it, you can use those outside influences, those outside events, bring them into your classroom or into your homeschooling, I guess I should say, and um, learn from them and learn the history behind them. So that's what I love about this curriculum. So I'm gonna show you how I plan a lesson. So stay tuned. the unit that I need I'm going to grab and because I'm planning history we're going to be using story of the world I'm gonna grab that and then I'm also going to grab this planner that I created and I've already started filling it out um, so I know what's happening but I'm gonna grab this. This was very similar to um, layers of learning planner that I have showed in my previous video. The only difference is I took away the project title and details at the bottom. I've created day one, day two, day two, day three, because I wanted to create an open and go curriculum. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I use this planner backwards. I plan all my days I write in my notes and my videos, and then at the very end is where I'll write what I want my children to learn. I kind of need to know what we're doing to gather what we're going to be do learning. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of my unit, and inside my unit, on all my units, I've written um, the story of the world and what chapters are used for this unit. So in this one, it says um, ancient times one, three, and five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to story of the world. I'm going to open up to chapter one. Chapter one is the earliest people, the first nomads. I'm going to just skim it to see if we can even finish it in a day. Sometimes there'll be sections um, within it like so there's chapter one, and then it went down here to a, another subsection. The first nomads became farmers. Sometimes I will just read the first portion. We'll stop there, and then another day we'll read the rest. But for this one, I think we can read it all in one day. So the first thing I will write for day one is going to be story of the world, chapter one. And then for every history lesson, I always do the maps that are inside of the unit. So I'm going to flip through. Um, and it says right here, Exploration Fertile Crescent Map. It has this printable at the end. It's not colored. They're going to color it. But I'm just going to read through it, make sure. Um, yeah, so this one has to deal with um the irrigation of the land where they could where the fertile crescent was so i definitely want to do this map so i'm going to write exploration fertile map and then i normally put the page of inside the unit where this is at um sometimes this just for when i get further in when there's different explorations knowing the page lets me get there quicker and then what i'm going to do is i use my highlighter and i highlight the map because I know I need to print this um, either now or whenever I have time. So that's going to take care of chapter one, although chapter one, let's see, it has to deal with farming. Um, yeah. So then next I'm going to look at chapter three. What is chapter three about? And it says the first writing hieroglyphics and cuneiform. So again, I'm going to look through it. We can finish this in a day. 
So this is going to be my day two. Day two is going to be story of the world chapter three. Um, and then I'm going to look, it said one, three and five. So I'm going to go to chapter five, see what chapter five is about. Because I have found that through the units, sometimes they'll give us uh, multiple chapters, but you, um, sometimes it'll jump from like this book to the next book because you're, you're um, nearing the end. So I will want to look and see what this is about. So the, this one is the first Sumerian doctor or dictator, sorry. Um... I'm going to pause on not reading this one because it's talking about Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt and I just don't think we're there just yet for introducing it for the first time. So I'm going to pause for that. I'm not going to read chapter five. So now what I'm going to do is I see that for day one, I'm going to read chapter one and I'm going to do a map. Um, then on day two, we're reading Story of the World, chapter three, and I knew it had I know it has to do with um, hieroglyphics and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the unit, and I'm going to see what explorations they have. And right away, I see exploration cuneiform writing. Let's see. Tell the tale of Giglamesh orally and ask your student to repeat it back word for word. How important is writing? Um, it would be hard to just remember your grocery list. What else do you use writing writing for all the time? Um, writing in Mesopotamia was done on clay tablets with a reed. So it gives me the tale of Giglamesh. We're going to read that. And then it says, try it for yourself. So I think, and this one just requires Play-Doh and some toothpicks. So for me, that's easy. I have those things. So I'm going to write on day two, exploration, cuneiform writing. And then I just wrote myself a little note that it's using um, Play-Doh and toothpicks because those are not things that I have downstairs in our homeschool room. So I wrote that down and then I highlighted it to tell myself to get that gathered. So I have it all ready to go. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going through. I'm going to see if there's anything else that I think would be fun for this unit. Um, let's see. We have this ziggurat builders exploration and it will look like this out of play-doh and then what i also like is they have these mud bricks so we if you were doing this unit in the winter time obviously mud bricks is probably if you're in a um, snowy place this is probably not something that you're going to want to do but because we are nearing um we're in spring and so it's getting warmer this is something that I would plan for us to do because we could do it outside. So for me, I'm going to write down for day three, I'm going to write down exploration um, ziggurat builders. Now I don't know what those are personally, so I'm going to need to go and um, find out that information myself first. So what I like to do is I like to go on YouTube because I like to mix in some videos to, to eliminate me having to read and learn all the time. I want to give them some videos. So I'll go on YouTube and I'm going to look for something that has to do with ziggurats and um, that will explain to me and my children what they are and what they're used for. So I just write a note. If I was not recording, I would go on right now. That's what I would do is go on YouTube, find a video. now. For YouTube, I have created folders for each of my kids. And then what I do is I save the videos within those folders. And then um, once the unit is done at the end, I'll go through and delete all the videos that we have watched and it's a fresh new folder ready to go. That's how I plan. My son and daughter are watching the, um, they're usually watching the same thing, but again, they have their own folder just for whatever reason. My son decides he wants to go and watch it by himself. He can go do that. And my daughter can go and all she has to do is just find her folder i tell them the titles oh. so my son and daughter watch the same videos i tell them the titles of the videos that they're watching and they get to go and watch those videos so i once i find that video i'm going to save it inside their folder i'm going to write the title down here for my videos and then i'm going to write a quick reference down here 
um, the video and then I'll say inside folder to tell me that I've already done that. Um, I'm going to keep going through and see if there's anything else. There is this cool writer's thing where give each student a writer's notebook. This is a notebook they can use to jot down thoughts, write ideas, make character sketches. So I like the idea of the cuneiform that they were learning about, but taking it a step further and do you understand how writing is so important? So for me, um, I like it, but for other units and signs that we have planned, um, we have other writing activities, so I'm not going to choose that one, but I do like the idea of showing that writing is really important. They have this um, recipe, so I do like this because when I'm looking at it, it just requires flour, water, and salt, and I have all of those things. So um, for me, on I'm going to add it to day one because day one is just reading and then a map. So the map takes five minutes and the reading is going to maybe take five, seven minutes. So I'm going to add at the exploration of the flat bread feast. And then again, I'm just going to write myself a note of flour, salt, and water. And I'm going to highlight it. Although all of those things are in my kitchen, I want to make sure that when I'm planning for the week that I have these items, because it says that I'm going to need them. Um, Let's see. So currently right now I have three days planned. I think the very last thing I might want to do is, let's see. Um, at, in here they have this, They have this quick overview of Mesopotamia, so this video. Now, Layers of Learning on YouTube has their own channel, and then within those channels, they have playlists for each um, unit. So I could, I could go on there and see if this video is in there or if there's any other videos is what I would do to kind of wrap it up. So I think on day four, I will, if I can verify that this video is on there or find something, because then there's also another video here about Mesopotamia. So I'm going to put YouTube. I just put YT and then I'm going to put um, Mesopotamia video. Mesopotamia. Once I have the exact title, that's where I will put it up here in my videos again. And so for me, um, so I have all my dates planned. The, the next thing I'll do is I will go back to the very beginning where it has my library list and look and see if there's something that my um, daughter can read because she's an avid reader. So I'm going to go through and I see this book that says the Golden Sand. Um, Sandal, A Cinderella Story from the Middle East. I'm going to go on my library website and see if um, they either have this hard copy book or an ebook. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that down here. If they have it, I'm going to write it down here. Because we're military, we get to use the base library and then we also get to use our city library. So I get to choose from two libraries. So I need to put specifically where it's from. So I'm going to put that here. And then if we're doing this unit next week, then I will already check the book out so it's ready to go. If not, I'm just going to put it there so I know it's there if you're planning far ahead. Um, and then what I'll do is I will get the book. And if my daughter's not reading, if it's something that I want to read too, because when we get done with Fix It, I will read something afterwards. What I do is I'll um, look and see how many chapters are in the book. Divide that by the amount of weeks it's going to take for us to finish this unit. So currently with this unit, um, we have four days planned. We do history two to three times a week. Right now it's about two because science is taking up more of that time. So because we have four days, this is going to take me two weeks to finish. So I'm going to take, let's say the book is 10 chapters. The Golden Sandal is 10 chapters. 
I'm going to take 10 chapters divided by 10 days of school. That's two chapters a day. So either my daughter is reading two chapters a day if I'm having her read it or I'm reading it. If she is reading it, I will just write on day one because that's when I want her to start. I'm going to write her initial and then I'm going to say read um, in apostrophes golden, golden sandal. And on her planner is going to be listed um, golden sandal, read chapters one and two, three and four, five and six, all the way up until the following week until it's done. If I'm reading it, the same thing. Instead, I'm just going to put my initial um, and then say the same thing. Um, last. Now, the last thing I do when planning this unit, I told you I work backwards, is the objectives for the unit. Now, I know because I've already planned, we are going to be learning where the Fertile Crescent is. We're going to be learning about cuneiform writing. We're going to be learning about um, ziggurats. We're going to be learning just some basic Mesopotamia. So what I'm going to do is things I want my kids to know. I want them to know where Mesopotamia is located. To see the difference in writing and the importance of writing. I want them to know why and what are ziggurats used for in uh, Mesopotamia. Um, I think that's it. Yes, so that was it. We are, when we are reading the ziggurats, we are, or doing the cuneiform writing, we are reading the tale of Giglamesh. So I might, let's say for my, um, my first grader because she's starting to join in for her on the day that we do the cuneiform writing she's going to do that um but i might take it a step further for my older two i might have them draw um a quick reenactment or write of giglamesh So on day two, they're gonna we're gonna read Story of the World chapter three. We're gonna do the cuneiform writing, and then for my older two, I'm going to have them draw or write the reenactment to retell me what Giglamesh was. I could, if I if I felt like my daughter would um, stick with us long enough, I could find a coloring sheet for Giglamesh, but I don't think she, I think the writing is good enough. That's as far as she's gonna stick. Um, let's see. Day four is really just a video, so. Maybe that would be the time that maybe I would have a Giglamish photo um, coloring sheet with her to keep her there watching and entertained. But again, that's how I, it would really depend on your child. Um, if I were doing a unit and I found that there are some explorations that are too far above for my daughter who's in first grade, sometimes she just doesn't join us when it comes to history, she's still young. Or I will write her initial and then I'll write what I want her to do. You could also um, color code it. So you could just write whatever it is, exploration. I want uh, my first grader to do the um, cuneiform writing with Plato and I want my older two to do the um, narrative of Giglamesh. I would just highlight them in two different colors and that would tell me when I quickly saw that this one is for my first grader and then this one is for my older two. That's how I would do it if I were planning uh, both of them at the same time currently. So that took care of um, planning for history. I will do a video on planning for science because I feel that that takes a little bit more planning um, and a little bit more literature and reading than history. But hopefully this helps you figure out how to use layers of learning um, we've been using it this way and this is how I've created an open and go. So I at least know for at least the next two weeks, I'm good to go with this unit. I'll just come and open it up, see what we're doing, and then I'm good to go. So happy homeschooling.